everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. How you guys doing? Happy Monday. It is uh, June 17th, 2019. And Mr. Man is at the coast. We're having a, uh, we're having a, a, a driveway put in for, um, it's not really a driveway, it's more like four yards of gravel was dumped. And he took the tractor down there and he spread it and made a driveway. And then we're having a carport, car cover thing installed tomorrow to cover the boat. So, y'all, it rained. Oh, it rained today. It rained last night. Horrible thunderstorms. My gosh. So, we want to cover the boat. Um, we had it in a slip. There's a story why we don't. I'm not going to share that here. But um, anyway... So last Saturday, we had um, a pool party here at the house, and we had like 20 friends over, and it was a great time. We had a big fish fry, wing fry, fried ribs. If you've never had fried ribs, you need to do that. Fabulous. Just give them a rub, drop them in when they float, they're done. Oh, man, are they good. Anyway, so we had this big party, and out on the pool deck, we had two big 10 by 10 awnings, right next to each other, side by side, you know, so we'd have shade because it's 100 degrees. We were both so give out after that party. I tell y'all what, so <laughs> Sunday before he left for Port O'Connor, I said, you want to take those awnings down? He's like, nah, I'm, I don't feel like it. I'll take them down on Wednesday when I get back. I said, okay. <laughs> Good thing he tied them to the port, to the deck railing because I'll tell you guys what, Oh my goodness, that storm came in. I mean, lightning and thunder and oh my goodness. And it woke me up. It woke the whole neighborhood up. Well, those awnings now are like upside down, big legs out everywhere. Both of them are bent to Dickens and it looks like a big upside down spider. I took a picture of it this morning and I sent it to him. <laughs> he goes, oops, my bad. <laughs> like, you're going to have to buy new awnings. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Y'all, my life, you have no idea. I'm telling you. Okay. So what are we doing? Guess what I got in the mail? Did you guys see this from Fat Quarter Shop? It's card called Half Yard Wreath Wall Hanging Kit. Look. I love this. I love it. I loved it when I saw it online the other day, or maybe I saw it in an email from them or something like that. And um, they're having their anniversary, and they had free shipping, and I snagged it. I, so I got, this is the kit that comes with it. So they send you the green. Let me stand up. They send you the green. They send you the white background fabric, and they send you the red for the bow. Y'all, fondling fabric is like right up there with petting a puppy. <laughs> and I got the backing. Uh, I got the backing as well. See that? This is going to be darling. Too cute. Very happy with this. So, that is definitely in the queue. I need to get this done like before October so I know that it's done done. And then... Um, I am also in the middle of making a quilt for my boss because I've worked for him since 2011, longer than I've ever worked for anybody else, and he's retiring on the 31st of July, and I know he doesn't watch my videos, so I'm going to tell you guys what I'm doing. So, oh, I got this thread. Hmm. Hazards of the job, right? I wanted to make him this gallantly streaming quilt. I have made this quilt before. And it's a beautiful, beautiful quilt. It uses two and a half inch strips. But y'all, it wouldn't go with a thing in his, in his house, you know. He's a retired Air Force Chief Master Sergeant. And um, so now he's got like, I don't know, 35, 40 years total federal service. So I was like, well, I really like this pattern, but the red, white, and blue isn't gonna cut it. He'll never, you know what I mean? So I told, I think I told you guys before, I was going to use the Wit and Wisdom line. And this is part of a block. 
there's uh, I'm making the lap size so there's 48 of these uh, plus a long piece to make a that little star pattern in the middle this is going to be gorgeous but I don't know if I like it does that make sense I mean it's not foo-foo girly but I don't know I'm gonna go ahead and finish it and see how it goes I'm sure it'll be fine it'll be fine but um, oh also check out that point see that the first time I made this pattern I tipped nearly every point on this because I didn't know what I was doing so for you beginner quilters and you want to learn how to piece I'm gonna put a, a little snippet here in at the end of this video that explains how I get this exact point where you don't tip it here's the back Can you see the back and what to do when you have seams that they might this of course the seams match up because you try to nest them but there's um that's blue she's getting a drink hi baby girl okay hi sweet girl yes yeah your mama's good girl so the seams will match up because you nest them but one of them like maybe the upper one has way more fabric and you get a bulge I show you how to fix that too because that oh will drive you crazy when you try to um, when you try to piece especially if you're doing something on the bias but even when it's not on the bias you get these two things together and you're like well how hard can it be they're both two and a half inches no it doesn't work like that rarely does it work like that so anyway if you're interested stick around if not when I say goodbye y'all can just click off but um, okay what else we are getting close to doing the embroider along for you machine embroiderers um, remember I contacted uh, Eileen Roche from designs and machine embroidery magazine and she gave me permission to do an embroider along with all of you um, from a it's called Trapunto seashell runner and here is what it looks like okay beautiful beautiful runner there, the files are free, and um, I. but we can't do it until July 1st, after the May-June issue has run its course. So July 1st, we're going to start. Um, however, on my blog, powertoolswiththread.com, I just put a post out yesterday that tells you what you need in order to make the table runner, because there is a list of materials right here, okay? And I put that list of materials there. I also have links on on the blog for you. You can get those on Amazon. Those are affiliate links. I might make a nickel. Who knows? Who cares? Don't feel obligated. Um, like like it says, you need um, shape flex, one yard of shape flex. This is I got this at Walmart today for six bucks, maybe something like that. You need painters tape. I picked this up. I got this in the craft section right next to the sewing section. So, um, whatever. But anyway, for those of you who want to do the embroider along with us, we'll do it over a couple of days and I'll shoot a segment and then put it out online. If you get stuck and you're not sure how what you're doing, um, make a comment on the blog because I'll do a blog post for each one of those as well. Um, so, Y'all, this is going to be embroidery 101, okay? If if you you know, if you know what you're doing, when I give you all the links to the files and the instructions on July 1st, knock yourself out. Go do it and have a great time. Let's see it on uh, Instagram. Uh, you know, tag me at hashtag Power Tools with Thread. But um, th this this is going to be slow. This is going to be for those of you who have paid loads and loads of money for a machine you know an embroidery machine or maybe not loads of money maybe it was just a couple hundred bucks but it's still in the box and you are intimidated by it so on my blog I give you the list of materials you need and I also give you some homework like take your machine out of the box and number two read your manual okay so um, that's really important Y'all, these things were built by a man. They're not that hard. 
I'm kidding. Don't turn me into the police. Good grief. Anyway, that's all I had to talk to you about. This is short and sweet. So, um, stick around for uh, the tips on how to do some good piecing and uh, quilt piecing. And uh, y'all go sew something. Bye. I just want to do a quick little uh, tutorial for you beginners on quilt piecing and um, little tips and tricks you can do to uh, get your uh, seams right. When you have a point like this, okay, you want to make sure that you've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there, okay? That's really important. If you don't, you can make it work, but you just kind of have to work with it a little bit. So if your point goes all the way up to the edge um, and you do not have any seam allowance right here, you're going to tip that point, meaning when you sew across it, it's going to cut across the tip. You're going to have to decide if that's an issue for you or not. Okay. So normally, my instructions right now... I'm in the middle of making this uh, quilt block right here and the instructions normally you take you know your smaller piece and you'd put it on you know and match up your seam uh, your seams and nest them and whatnot and that would be the way to go but if I do that like this I cannot see where that point is on the back <coughs> excuse me so I'm going to sew it upside down, okay? I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. So when you do this, the first thing you want to do is match up your center seam, all right? Not from the edge, but from the center. If you don't have a center seam, um, you know, just match up what you can that's close. And I put a pin in, I go in on one side of the stitch line, and I come out on the other. So these are nested like this oh, can you see that these are nested they go right together like this and you take in on one side of the stitch line and out on the other and that locks that little nest right there okay and then I'll do another one and in on one side and out on the other <clears throat> I, if you want, you can pin the bottom. You don't have to. But now up here, and if it makes it easier for you, you can take like a, um, let me look. If it makes it easier for you when you first start, you can take a ruler and write where, right where this line, this stitch line, and this stitch line converge is where exactly you want to sew on. So I don't do that anymore, but I used to. So you just can take like a friction pen. All right. So now see, I have that, that that's my stitch line. And you nest these seams, butt them up together. Okay. And then in one side and out the other. Now, I know that they're going to nest up. But see this right here? I got a whole lot more fabric here than down here. The odds of me getting a tuck are pretty high. So let me show you how to deal with that. Okay. So, I'm going to aim this black line into the center of my foot and you don't have to tug you can um, I just hold the ends together down here and see there's a little bit of short it's kind of short doesn't matter no big deal we'll even that out later well, my main concern right now is not to tip that point so I'm gonna go through to this when you're sewing and you have a seam allowance that's facing that way, 
um, as you go over the plate, you want to just lift up just a little bit and you, you might even need to push it with your finger so that it doesn't get stitched um, backwards like that. You don't want that. It causes unnecessary bulk. Okay, so now I have gone over this second seam. I'm just going to um, use an old garment sewing trick. See how I've got too much fabric up here and not enough down there. That's going to cause a tuck. If I try to sew this, it's going to cause a tuck. So the trick is you just turn it over and you let the feed dogs work that in and ease in that extra fabric. Again, I'm going to just kind of hold it, go slow. I do sew over my pins when I'm sewing slow. And when you come up to the seam that you already sewed, you go just on the other side of it into the seam allowance, two or three stitches, and that will uh, take care of locking it in without having to back stitch because you crossed over. Okay, let's see. That looks pretty good right there. Very nice. Look at that. So, we didn't tip the point and we don't have a tuck. Once this gets uh, pressed, give it a good steam, you won't even notice. So, that's my tip of the day for beginner piecers.